I'm excited to chat today with Michelle PW. Michelle is considered one of the hottest direct response copywriters and marketing consultants in the industry to today. Uh, she has a reputation for creating, uh, for crafting copy and creating online and offline marketing campaigns that get results. Uh, she started prof uh, writing professionally in 1992, uh, working at agencies and on staff as a marketing communication writing specialist. And in 1998, she started her business as a freelance copywriter. Uh, but she quickly realized her vision was bigger than serving her clients as a one woman shop. In 2004, she began the transformation to building a copywriting and mar marketing company. Two years later, her vision has turned into reality and uh, Michelle PW Creative Concepts and Copywriting LLC is the premier direct response copywriting and marketing company today, catering to entrepreneurs and small business owners internationally, including the who's who's of internet marketing. Some of her clients include Ellie Brown, Lisa Sasevich, Brian Tracy, John Asaraf, Bernadette Doyle, Alex Mendocian, Kendall Summerhawk, Alexis martin Mealy. And in, in, additional, in addition to being a national speaker, a fiction author, Michelle is also a best-selling author of the love-based copywriting books that teach people how to write copy that attracts, inspires, and invites. And you can find her over at michellepw.com as well as lovebasedbiz.com where she helps people to transform their lives as they change their relationship with money from fear-based to love-based through her blog po posts and through her podcasts. So thank you so much for being here, Michelle. Thank you for having me. I, I love talking to writers, as you know, because I, since I am a writer, so I'm very excited to be on here and, and talking to writers and helping them out. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, and uh, I just I, I just love what you have to say in your in your blog posts and in your in your podcasts and, and the different people uh, you've been interviewing. It's just it's really helped me sort of, you know, that mental game, I guess, yeah. uh, you know, that sort of switch that you know, many of us writers need, <laughs> well, anyone really that's an entrepreneur needs, <laughs> but, uh, so w w would you, sh would you share your story, how you got started, uh, writing and, and copywriting and then kind of into creating your own business around that? Yes, I would love to. So I actually taught myself to read at three years old because I wanted to write fiction so badly. I wanted to write stories so badly. I didn't actually call it fiction at three. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I actually poured over those books because I, 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 at the time it was funny because I was trying to uh, I, I had so many I had stories, so, so many stories in my head at three, and I, I wanted the words because I knew that that would be a more I, I could feel this. I mean, I'm obviously I'm obviously I'm explaining this a lot better than I could have at three, but um, I, I felt like being able to write it down, I would be able to capture this much more powerfully than drawing my little pictures, which is what I was doing. And I was drawing these little happy face spiders, so that's how I thought my these little stories of these happy. Anyways, so but I was pretty determined. And then when I was in high school, um, I was kind of casting around trying to figure out how to what to do to make money, um, and I wanted to be to make money as a writer while writing my books. And everybody said, "Why don't you go be a journalist?" And that was the last thing I wanted to be. So I kind of fell into this whole uh, copywriting, uh, you know, direct response copywriting, marketing, advertising, and college. So there's a few things that I just I uh, I wanted to. To kind of say, because um, I, I mean, I loved how you said writing in business. So, my first, my my first thing that I would love for all of you really, really to get your head around is that if you are a writer, you have a business. I know yeah. most writers don't think this. I mean, you you think of yourself, even if you're a copywriter, or you know, a writer for hire, or you've got books. You know, you're thinking of yourself as an author, or an artist, but it doesn't. Matter. Even if you're writing fiction books, you have a writing business, mm -hmm. and you're and what you're selling are fiction books, and the the faster and more successful you are at making that shift, the easier this is all going to be. Because the the reality is, is that, you know, as you, you know, there's, there's so many reasons why, and I'll just share one, and we'll hopefully we'll get to more throughout the call. But one of them is, you know, when you put your works out there, your books out there, you get bad reviews. Um, if you think of this as a business, and it's like, okay, well, that book wasn't successful, we'll try the next one, it's going to, it's going to make it a lot easier for you not to get so personally involved with, you know, the success or failure. And you're also going to be more open to like, okay, well, I got to advertise. I mean, all the stuff that we talk about as entrepreneurs, because I mean, you know, this idea of just, you know, putting your book on Amazon and, you know, I mean, you know, build it and they will come. There's too many books. You know, it's not going to happen unless you actively work it. And it's nothing, it's not personal. It's nothing to do with you or the quality of your book. It's just, that's, that's the way it is. So, 
I feel like this, you know, so that's the first thing. And I, and that's part of it because this is another piece of my, that, you know, what I told you was my story that I tell, you know, I usually tell, but this is, I'm, I'm delving out in a little bit of the writing part of it. I actually got away from writers and writing for a while because I got very frustrated with fiction writers. Um, and I share this with you because I want, because I feel like this could be really important. Um, because I, and I think, and again, this was something like now I, looking back, I can see what happened, but part of it was the, you know, the, the, the sort of the lack of professionalism around, because like I, I was, I, I, I was surrounded by a lot. I took a lot of fiction writing courses. I had, I was in critique groups, um, you know, a member of a writing groups and where I live now, I, I moved to Arizona about, you know, over 20 years ago and we live in kind of a retirement community. And I actually dro- joined when I first got here an association that uh, w- that was catering to writers. And in fact, it had like Prescott professional writers. There's professional writers at Prescott, something like that. And so I, I was I was I was excited to join. It was very big, lots and lots of people, uh, probably 50, 70 people at every meeting, which is pretty big considering this is a this is a fairly small town, about thirty thousand people. But they're all retired, and the vast majority of them never wrote. You know, they all had the book inside them, but you know, and and they would even say, you know, that talk about how the fact they were retired and they still couldn't find the time to write. Oh, okay. So. At, as, at that point, I was making a living as a freelance copywriter, plus I was writing novels. So, I mean, I was writing all the time. And so, so I, I was, I, I, so a lot of this was my own issues. Um, I was getting so frustrated because, because quite honestly, I would have loved to have been retired and just working on my books. But, you know, I was, I, you know, that would have been so much easier for me. Instead, I'm trying to write, you know, copy and this and that. And, oh, my God. Um, so uh, that was, that was a big reason why I got angry. It was because I was, you know, angry at myself. But, but, um. For all of you, I just want to and just 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 say this: like, if you are, if you are somebody who is who is waiting for the perfect time to start writing, um, I would just like to invite you to 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 think that you know maybe that perfect time is now. It doesn't matter, mm-hmm. you know, even if you've got you know three little kids at home and you're trying to take care of your sick mom, you know, and it. it you know, bills to pay. I get it. Life is there. And even if it's only 15 minutes a day, even if it's only five minutes a day, quite honestly, if you can just consistently every single day carve out a, just a few minutes to work on your book, you know, that's going to just, that, that could alone could just change your life. And if you start to think of this as, you know, don't think of this as your, you know, if you, oh, I should say, you know, if you can, if you can, you, you can switch your transformation instead of thinking of this as your hobby or that little creative thing you're doing or it's never going to amount to much or whatever it whatever's going on all I mean and believe me I know it I have all sorts of crap in my head too but um, whatever is there that's that's keeping you from seriously take taking your writing seriously because it is serious this is your business this is what you should be doing so even if it's only 15 minutes a day, you are still a writer because you are working towards your business, towards what you need to do. And you're just putting in and all, if all you've got is 15 minutes, then that's all you've got, but it's something. And so really just, I just would love for all of you to really, to really, um, you know, sit down, you know, finish this podcast and sit down and write for 15 minutes. (laughs) That's awesome. Inspiration, Michelle. Wow. And I, I think, I think we all needed to hear that. Because you're right, you're right. Like sometimes just life, there's always 50 things. Everybody has it though. This is the thing. And so you just got to decide what, uh, you know, when you're going to carve out that time, right? Because we all have a list (laughs) of stuff. Yeah, you're going to die with a massive to-do list. I mean, it's never going to go away. So there's always something to do. (laughs) So you have a beautiful choice right now to just to choose your life force. And here's another piece of my story I don't always tell either. And I'll just share this very briefly too. I mean, part of where I mean, I I had been writing. I mean, I was a freelance copywriter. I you know I then you know we went into the the, the love based books, which I, I'm excited to share with you because I think there's pieces in that that can really help you as well. But. What really finally caused me to, you know, I, I, I could have made a lot of lip service to a lot of what I said, but what really caused me to, to really to have it grounded in my body, and I guess that's yeah. the difference, was when my mother died about a year and a half ago. And so, um, you know, that's, it's, it's very, you know, that's, you know, unfortunately, those kind of incidents can really get you very clear on what you're, you're spending your life force and what you're not spending your life force on. And... Um, and so what I'd like to invite all of you is I don't um, and 
is rather than waiting, because the my biggest regret over my mother's death is that it took my mother's death for me to get my act together as a writer and to really start sorting everything out. And I really wish that I didn't need her death to have, to have done that. I really wish I could have gotten my act together before. Yeah. So I share that with you in, in hopes that maybe even if just one or two of you out there can, can you know, kick yourself in the rear and get going, I will consider that a big success. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Would you, would you share uh, with, with, you know, writers that are listening, um, so what was really, uh, I guess, uh, the, what made you, caused you, I guess, to uh, reevaluate traditional direct response copy industry and to make the switch to love-based copy money and mindset? And, and would you give listeners sort of, I, I guess, a definition, philosophy <laughs> behind yes. the love-based, you know, copy oh, and, and, and mindset, you. that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, okay, so the so where this all happened was that you know because I was a, I've been a freelance copywriter since well I'm old <laughs> you might not know it but I, I, I'm pretty old so over 20 years um, and uh, so you know and I learned from a lot of the best and a lot of the best in the business um, and a lot of the best in the business were uh, uh, you know they 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 were mostly dominated by men and they had a different philosophy so. Um, what ended up happening though in, so I, I, I was doing this throughout like the early 2000s when, it was, when, when really the internet started to really come into play and really started to transform business because before then there weren't as many women business owners and a lot of that was just simply barriers to entry. It wasn't that anybody was telling them not to, but you know, back then you had to get, you know, I mean, for you to have a business, you'd have to go rent space and, you know, because most of the businesses were brick and motor. So, uh, you know, so it just, you know, if you, if you're staying home with little ones and just wanted a part-time business, you know, if you're going to go rent a storefront, that's just not, that's just not feasible. So, but what happened in the internet, everything changed because now all of a sudden you actually could develop a business at home, uh, you know, a little coaching business or consulting or healing or whatever that is using the internet, your phone, you know, and you, you could do it part time. You could balance it around your children. I mean, it, it, you're on your family. So women started to enter the business uh, in, in much greater numbers, which was great. And the coaching and consulting uh, uh, industries, transformation industries, also what they call just exploded. So I was in the middle of all this and, and watching this. And I had friends at the time that would say to me, because at the time, you know, everybody was still teaching, you know, direct response copy. Now, direct response copy, we're not talking about um, putting a copyright on, you know, protecting your intellectual property. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about writing materials to promote mm -hmm. things, you know, to promote products, promote services, to promote your books, whatever it is. And businesses, part of the reason why I was able to make you know, uh, you know, be a freelance copywriter for so long is this, you know, that that's actually a pretty big industry. So something else I just like to invite, you know, listening, um, if you are looking for ways, like maybe you really can't stand your job and want to quit to be a full time writer. One thing that could help, you know, with the transition is to actually become a copywriter. And you don't have to do it full time, like I did, you know, you could you could balance it, and do it, you know, part time or pick up a few projects to fill in the blanks. I mean, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do this. But, you know, the reality is, is there's just a lot of businesses and they don't have full time copywriters. Uh, you know, even back then, even 20 years ago, they they would, you know, they I mean, there were so obviously some copywriters on staff, but a lot of times there weren't. And they were just simply, um, you know, they, they, would, they would simply use freelancers or contractors. So, so that's kind of, so that's, so that's sort of the whole, the whole thing of copywriting. So I had all my friends would say to me, my coaching friends, they would say to me, you know, we hate direct response copy and you might hate direct response copy too. These are those sales letters. Now they're all over the place, but they're the sales letters when you scroll down online and you're like, where's the price? I just want to know how much it costs. Does anybody read this? You know, that's, that's, you know, and it's, and it's stuff that makes you feel slimy and salesy and inauthentic and, you know, telling emails that tell you to click here, um, you know, places where you go to, you know, to put in your name and email address so you can get a free training. All of that is direct response. And the beauty of direct response is it, is it provides leverage. This is why even if you decide not to become a freelance copywriter, still learning this for your own book business um, is really important because that, that, 
idea of putting out like a, you know, a, a ha, you know, using that to build a list and all of those foundational pieces is still really important. And really what direct response copy gives you is leverage because it allows you to market one to many. It's a way to leverage your time. It's a way to leverage your energy and your expertise. So it's still, it's regardless, it's an excellent skill to have. So, um, but the problem is, is that, you know, and you might be feeling it's like, oh, I hate the way it feels. That's what all my friends said. So my friends said to me, would say to me, you need to come up with a new way of writing copy. Uh, that's like that, that isn't so salesy and icky and yeah. disgusting. And at the time I wasn't ready to hear it. And I said, absolutely not. I am not the person to do that. There's plenty of great copywriting trainings. I'm not going to write a copywriting book. I was pretty, pretty adamant about it. Well, over the years, you know, I, I, you know, kept like, you know, circling around in my head, circling around in my head. And then finally one day, a friend of mine came out with this book, Love Based Marketing. And I looked at that and I thought, Love Based Copy. And I thought, okay, so what would be the reverse of that? It would be Fear Based Copy. And that's when everything just came into place. And that's when I understood direct response copy. So this is what's going on. All emotions fit into either love or fear. There's only, I mean, there's only two types of emotion, either love or fear. So fear, fear based emotions are clearly things like you know grief um grief fear anger uh worry anxiety resentment shame guilt you know you name it love-based emotions are you know hope love um you know acceptance you know the peace I, even i mean you can argue about some of the love-based emotions aren't, aren't really emotions but i think you know what i mean i mean they're feeling yeah. peace love acceptance um all of that, uh, you know, part of a community, you know, that you belong, all of those are, are, uh, are love-based. So, and love-based and fear-based emotions all exist in direct response copy. They're all kind of tangled up and they exist together. So the problem is, is why, fear, why traditional direct response copy feels so icky is because it's triggering fear. And so the fear is triggering that into you. So now you you feel fear and, and, and that's what you're reacting to. But you don't have to sell with fear, you can sell with love. So that's that's kind of where I birthed this whole, you know, round of books about love based, you know, copy marketing. And then what you're talking about love based money and mindset where that came from was because one of the things that I realized is, well, first off, pretty uh, the, the more I the deeper I got is more I saw that this is everywhere. Yeah. So uh, I mean, if you want to get your kids to go to bed at night, you've got a choice, you can use fear based, you, you can yell at them in a fear based way, yeah. or you can yell at them, or, or you can use love based emotions. I mean, yeah. everything in our life, you know, our businesses are built on our, uh, you know, our governments, everything, you know, can be looked at as a difference between fear and love. Yeah. So you have a choice. And, 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 and when I say you have a choice, you have a choice. I am simply the messenger and I'm the educator. So I'm here to to explain what's going on and then you can decide whatever you want to do with it if you want to sit if you want to keep using fear based that's that's totally fine so it's not very fear based it's not very love based if i tell you you have to use love based <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's just so so really this is a choice i'm just explaining where this all comes in so one of the things that i realized the deeper i got into this was the whole idea of the love bay is that is that you, it's really difficult to market yourself in a love based way if you are full of fear, and it's really easy in an entrepreneur to be full of fear. I mean, if you if you know if you you know I mean cash flow money is a huge trigger, yeah. you know, and that happens all the time with businesses, especially when they're starting out. I mean, there's dips and you know sometimes cash flow dries up, sometimes clients go away, sometimes things happen. I mean, there is any there is you know lots of things can happen that can kind of cause a crimp in cash flow and when that happens you know the, the the tendency if you haven't really worked on this is to go into fear which is totally understandable I've done it everyone's done it because you're, you're scared you know how am I gonna pay the bills that's totally normal but um, the problem is is that when you're in that space of fear and worry and oh my god what am I gonna do it's extremely hard to write to, to, to write than write love based and uh, to, to, to really to, to stand there because you're so desperate you know you're so attached to getting a client or selling books or whatever it is you are become so attached you can't it's difficult to, um, to to really do things in a love based way so that's where the money and mindset book came in because I realized just how important it was to have your mindset and your money and it was and I and I do have pieces of it in the in the books the copy in the on the online marketing book but I really thought it deserved its own book and I also thought because my own story is in there quite a bit 
And believe me, I mean, I struggled a lot with money. So um, I, I understand because I was there. So I really shared. So I, so I want you to know this. So wherever, wherever you are, it's perfect. And, you know, what you, and you and my story, reading about my story and reading about some of the stories of the experts that I also captured, you know, may help you move. Because it is really, you know, it's really easy to slip into despair and, and fear and all that other stuff when it comes to do with money. And the challenge, of course, is and the, and the growth edge is mm -hmm. is being able to, you know, to, to step beyond that. And, and it is possible. So I just want to offer that to you. Uh, I'm so glad you uh, just went into more depth with that because that's really helpful. Um, uh, so as a writer myself, this is something I've struggled with, uh, you know, sort of that transition from, you know, oh, I'm just dabbling, I'm just writing, into, wow, this is actually, I'm becoming an author entrepreneur, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, uh, you know, um, I've, I've needed to, you know, dig deeper into my own mindset. And I have to say your, you know, your books and your, and your blog posts and your podcasts have been awesome. Just oh, really, yeah. yes, <laughs> really helpful, really helpful. And um, uh, it's just, it's helpful to sort of, you know, because sometimes we just, you know, um, or at least this is for me, I guess, uh, that, that you just kind of go through life and you're not really going through, you're not really rooting out or understanding your actual fears. Yeah. Right. And so, I mean, your book's been amazing. Books. I, I think I've read <laughs> at least three, three now. <laughs> oh, good. So, Thank you. It's good. Yes. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I've actually been going through your exercises to to learn to shift my mindset to, you know, to one of abundance and love instead of just worrying about stuff and, you know, just uh, <laughs> the opposites, I guess. And so, uh, you know, would you, would you share, uh, cause you write down a four part process in your book, Love Based Money and Mindset. And um, would you, would you share with writers and entrepreneurs who are listening to um, how, you know, sort of that four part process to shift from yeah. fear of, or I guess fear based emotions to a mindset of abundance and love? Yeah, so it's, well, first off, um, you know, just also know this is a journey. So I just want to, I, I, so before I even start, I just, and, and know that, like, um, it, it, it doesn't stop, but it gets a lot easier. So I just, yeah. like, I, I mean, I had... Uh, like just in the last couple of weeks, I had a, a massive, you know, shift and breakthrough on this as well. And I've been working with it for a few years and I've gone even deeper. And, but, and, but I mean, and, but the thing is the payoff is so much better because then I have so much more peace. So, so it's, it's the, the trade off there, there are going to be, and this is important to remember because when you first start, it's, it's horrible, horrible beyond belief. And, uh, and, because, and, but, and then the other thing is because you haven't experienced the peace, uh, that comes on the other side of it, you know, at least for me, I did a lot of second guessing, like, what the hell did I get myself into? So, so, um, it really is worth it. And you just, you, you know, the only way out is through. So just kind of, Keep that in mind and, and just try and trust as much as you can, even if you're cursing my name when you're in the middle of it, <laughs> which you might be. <laughs> My my spiritual teacher who first got me into this, I was like really, really kind of swearing at her in the middle of this when I was in the middle of the first time. <laughs> what did I do? I shouldn't be listening to her. Anyways, so, so first you have to really just, um, you know, kind of identify, uh, uh, you know, start with, and part of the reason why I start there is because I think for all of you, like, you know, you want to be making money. So you kind of want to jump into the money part, money attraction, which I put as actually number three, <laughs> um, uh, because that's, that's not, you know, that's not really the, so the, fir the first thing really is to talk about, um, is, is, is the first piece of it is to really just get clear on, on the fear part. And, and, and to, and so where, where I go there, well, it's not even, I mean, and when I say fear-based emotion too, I'm not even just talking about worry. I know worry is my go-to, but anger could be yours too. So there's probably a default emotion. Um, and I, it, it's, I, it, I don't think it would be grief. Grief is usually underneath either fear or, 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 or anger. So, so, but you, we all have a go-to emotion. And, uh, and the go-to emotion is probably more likely not one of them is, is probably going to be either fear, worry, anxiety, or anger. So whatever that is, that that's kind of what's going on. So, so the first thing is to kind of just is to stop 
that res- you know that is to kind of res- to, to, to stop that stop stop what t- normally happens like when something happens that triggers you like something you know you've got you've got all these different responses you know you can bury those emotions you can you know uh, start an argument you can drink you can overeat you I mean and and, and believe me we all probably have mul- you can gossip you can shop I mean there's pr- and there's probably multiple reactions yeah. So it so that's the other thing too that I'm realizing is just how many different ways we, you know, procrastinating too can be one of those as well. And I'm yeah. procrastinating is one of mine actually, and not getting started and, you know, getting lost in social networking or starting a fight on social networking. Like getting especially now, now this is rife getting in the political f- fights on Facebook. Oh my God, you can spend the whole day doing that, <laughs> and not get a word written. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's all these different triggers. So, so the first thing is to try to break that. And so that's kind of what we go, go into the emotions with that is to just, and, and part of what you're doing is it doesn't feel like when I'm talking about this, you're probably thinking, how's this going to help me make money? Well, this helps you make money because you have to get, you have to actually break the, like what I just said about the sabotage. Like, let's say, you know, something happens that has you worried about business. You know, one reaction could be going, could be spending the day on Facebook. So instead of actually taking steps, like maybe marketing your book or doing something different, yeah. you waste an entire day on, on, on Facebook. So why did you do that? Well, because these, these emotions, these unconscious triggers are kind of preventing you from moving forward. So we start there and really kind of get into the emotions. And so I've got, I've got like uh, four or five, five different act, um, ways that you can start getting into it depending on what works for you and whatnot. And I invite you to try them all. And see which ones, because you're probably going to find one that works for you better than other ones. And then the second one is to really just get into like this. That, that's where that's when you, once you've kind of cleared some of that, you can look at the, the unconscious blocks and the sabotages. Yeah. You know the, the habits that are keeping you from doing the work. Like, you know, um, another habit could be. Uh, you know, uh, having too much drink to drink, you know, having, you know, having one too many, I mean, I'm not saying being a drunk, but like maybe you have one too many glasses of wine at night. Yeah. So like you, instead of having one or two, you have, you know, two or three and then you wake up, uh, you know, so then you wake up later, which, you know, and, 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 and you're, and you're kind of, you know, you're, you're a little hungover. So then, you know, so is, do you see how this can, you know, and then you suddenly can't find the time to write because you're not feeling all that great. So, you know, so it's all these little ways and, and, and there's so many of them that you don't even know uh, that, you, that that's so easy to do. So that's when you start and, and, and your brain is controlling this because really so much is your, your subconscious, your, your subconscious is the biggest part of your brain and that's really what's controlling your, your actions and you don't even really know it. Um, and, and that's what's so frustrating because <laughs> you think, you know, because in some cases like with me, you know, you can see that you're 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 making choices that aren't that aren't leading you. Like, you know, I mean, it's it's not like you know, it's like you get through an entire day. It's like I haven't written a word on my book, and it's like, well, why not? And and it's really frustrating because you don't know why you didn't work on it, but yet you didn't, or you didn't do like marketing, like you didn't get the marketing done that you're supposed to, or write the email that you're supposed to, or write the blog post you're supposed to. You know, you know, there's all this stuff, and and you know, maybe you know, and, and things happen. And you, and you and it's like and then you can you can excuse it and make justifications, but the reality is the work's not getting done. So that's why really just so then we have another set of exercises to kind of help you get through some of those blocks. And then finally, once you've kind of cleared some of the because with me, part of, another reason why I went this way is because with me I had so much noise in my head, um, just so much noise and uh, I couldn't hear anything. So I I needed to clear some of that out and just have silence in my head so then that to make it easier to then use some of these like money attraction exercises so that's when we go into the money attraction stuff and 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 to how to you know start, start attracting money and doing it that way and then the last one is really just about kind of marketing your your you know some ways to market and, and there are different ways like I've got a whole book love based online marketing which is a little bit more of an out, over strategy but but I included some other different sort of exercises and activities that um, may may resonate more with you if you kind of like more mindset stuff. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I hope that was that the, is. the questions. That I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I that, was that is, that's really helpful. Uh, so would you, would you uh, 
you know, would would you say it's it's important? Like some of these things, like um, saying daily affirmations, that sort of thing, is important to for for writers because the writers that I've talked to and myself, <laughs> uh, you know, we deal with so much self doubt and um, yeah. you know, like oh, is, would anyone would even one person buy my book other than my mother or <laughs> you know <laughs> or. <laughs> You know, or uh, just these questions come up, right? Because you feel like you're putting all of yourself, even if it's fiction, like you're putting so much of yourself into the book. Especially if it's fiction, I would say more than anything else. Right? Yeah, and actually, that's what the you know the first two, the first half of the love based money and mindset book, you know, would deal with those. Yeah, not even just. I mean, part I'm clearing the head out to make more money, but really, you can use those just to talk about exactly what you're saying. So, I think what. Affirmations may can work for you, so they absolutely can work. Um, but I, but that might not be the only thing. So that's that's why I like invite okay. people to try other things. So what I really though what I want to, to want to uh, in, encourage everybody to do is put, come up with some sort of writing ritual. So I think. I think before you sit down to work or before you start your day, um, I, I, I think it's really, you know, do certain things to get yourself in the mood. And that might include doing some affirmations or meditation or journaling. Or, you know, with me, I also like to light different candles and choose different music. So, you know, and not only does that help, I think, because it kind of helps tell your muse that, you know, hey, you're ready to, to sit down and write. But then it also, I think, um, it, I think it's just it's just good for habit because the other because, you know, this is not a straight line. Yeah. You know, you're going to start with like, in fact, just this morning, um, I I had I, I had some feelings and some some stuff had come up that you know I thought that you know I maybe dealt with, but <laughs> but, but they, they came back up. So. The, the thing is, is that it, it's, and when this first started happening to me, you know, it was very frustrating. I'm not saying that it won't still be frustrating, but now that I've been doing this long enough, I know that, you know, some, it's sometimes when, when old habits, like, like that habit of, is anyone going to read my book? And, you know, this can happen, you know, this might be something that every, you know, you might be a New York Times bestselling author, but every time you, you, you go to launch a new book, that's the doubt that creeps up yeah. and it doesn't make any sense. And so, it, yeah. it, you know, and you can point to all this. And, and if you said it to anyone, you know, people would, would just would try to men- would try to mentally tell you it doesn't make any sense. So so something I'd like to invite you to do is don't don't if you feel this, don't make yourself wrong. So don't try to talk yourself out of it or, you know, do mental exercises around it. If you really are, are worried about nobody reading it. Just let yourself feel worried about nobody reading it. I mean, I know that sounds kind of weird, but just do that because that is an emotion that just wants to be felt. And once you've felt it, it will go away. Emotions just want to be felt. And, it, and they don't make any sense, but, uh, but they're emotions. They're not yeah. supposed to make any sense. They don't live in your mind. So it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So just, just honor that little part of you because there's something there that you could do. So to me, I think, you know, maybe a new one is like, just let yourself feel those self-doubts. Let, let yourself feel. It's not going to feel very good, but let it let you feel it. And the, But the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. And then once you felt it, Take a deep breath, and then you're gonna and sit down to write because that's that's really what it is. But if you try to stuff it down or, or convince yourself otherwise, you can't convince your emotions not to not that that that, that they're wrong. Yeah, you're you're not. All you're gonna do is stuff them or do something or run away from them. Um, all you can do is feel them, as crazy and as illogical as they are. Just feel them and move on. Yeah, that actually makes a lot of sense because. Uh, as someone who is really good at stuffing emotions, yeah, I do. <laughs> at some point, it comes up. It might be a year later, but it's good. Yeah. You might as well you just, never get rid of them. <laughs> you might as well just feel it, and right, yes, and just let them be. That's good. That's really good. Yeah, and, and just don't make yourself wrong, and don't don't worry if and if you if you're gonna tell like if you tell your spouse and you know your spouse is gonna tell you that you're being silly, then don't tell your spouse. I mean, just <laughs> you know, I it's I mean the thing is is this this isn't something you can be talked out of. So don't don't approach it as talking yourself out, but just approach it as just let it you know let it happen because it's good because it's going to and it's gonna come out another way. So that's the other thing too. So so you can't get rid of them. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah. I I wanted to I wanted to ask do we kind of you know we talked about um uh you know kind of dived into that but what what would you what would what would be I guess your advice to uh writers who are um I I guess maybe advice that you maybe wish someone had shared with you when you first started taking steps to being an entrepreneur um uh you know because we all are on a journey some maybe catch that vision sooner than others yeah. but um you know what uh i guess what what advice do you wish you would have had you know i wish i'd started this journey sooner so i guess part of this is that, that i'm kind of telling you you know all my my books and even what i'm talking today is a lot of what i wish i really wish that i had oh here i'll, I'll tell a very quick story like in my 20s um, well, when I went to college, I guess I was 17, so I wasn't even 20 yet. Um, I took a creative writing class, an intermediate creative writing class. Well, the, and the instructor just thought I was, um, uh, you know, she 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 didn't like she she didn't think I was she didn't like my writing style. She didn't think I was talented. And anyway, she gave me a C. It was a whole, and she even said I, you know, I didn't have any talent. I mean, it was all very. So. Um, so uh, what I did was I handled it as a way, as in the way, the exact way that I t I'm telling you all not to handle it, which is why I tried to argue with that emotion. So, so I, you know, I, all, everyone would say to me things like, oh, Lucille Ball, you know, was told she was a, she was a horrible actress and look what happened to her, you know, so, you know, so, and then I kept saying to myself, I'm not going to let this, not going to let this bother me. I'm not going to let this bother me. And I wouldn't, I did not feel, I didn't let myself feel that hurt little emotion that here somebody was, somebody in a position of authority, you know, didn't like my writing. Yeah. Um, and what I ended up doing was blocking myself for about 10 years. I couldn't write a word. So, um, so, and at least not fiction. And I yeah. found my way back. It was a painful way of finding my way back. And I found my way back by writing copy. Um, so that's, you know, so that's, that's how I did it. it, it but it wasn't pretty, it wasn't pleasant. And I lost 10 years of book writing. So that's why I just really want to, I wish that was probably the one thing. Cause if I just, if I just, if I just let myself cry over which, I mean, really, that's what I really should have done is rather than tell everybody and get all caught up in the drama and how I'm going to be better than this. And then I had all, all my revenge fantasies for years too. Oh, I'm going to like, you know, um, you know, it's all, it's all silly. I mean, what I really should have just done is thrown a tantrum and cried and punched some pillows, didn't, and didn't tell anybody. And then I would have just, you know, I, I, the emotion would have moved through me and then I could have sat back down and started to write again. Yeah. But, you know, you're 17 and well, you make bad choices. So anyways, so that's why I, I think that's probably the most important thing, because as a writer, you are apps, you are the hardest part of this is that you only have yourself. You know, it's yeah. you, your computer, your books. Yeah. You know, you do not have coworkers. I mean, you might have an editor. I mean, you might. I mean, I'm not saying you don't have partners, but it, it really is you. And, you know, other people can be supporting you. But it's different. It's not like this is your vision, your your you know your your destiny more than anything else. It's not like you and a group of you are writing a book together. So you really have to take care of yourself. And 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 the thing is, things can hit you harder because of that. So it's not like you could. So that's that's just why. That's why just managing your emotions. I just think is really important. Yeah. Just your books and, and everything. I just encourage people to go check out your, your blog and your, <laughs> your podcast and your books and just to uh, to learn through this because this is, uh, I don't know, it's really what I needed. And I think there's people out there that could really, would really Oh, be thank you. I, I'm so happy to hear that. That makes me feel so good that I've helped somebody. Oh, <laughs> you have. You have. Totally. Uh, so uh, would, you, would you share, uh, you know, what new books, projects, courses you have on the go right now and then where people can find you online? Yeah, so um, Love Based Biz Blog is probably the best way. That's a, it's a new blog, so um, and and I mean you can find me at Michelle PW too. But Love Based Biz Blog is or Love Based Biz dot com is the is the place, and that's where you know the podcast is. The podcast is Love Based Money, uh, and then I also have the books there. And so the books, um, so I've got um, you know right now it's I guess it's five in the Love Based series, and then I have two novels. They're psychological thrillers, and you can kind of find all of that there. I'm currently working on another novel, which I should be uh, that should be out in, in a few months. Is another psychological thrill. It's my first series, so that's that's exciting that's and awesome. scary. I know it's scary too. It's like oh, I, to try. I was like I have a lot of self doubt around that. Um, 
<laughs> and then my and then and also on the non picture on the love based side, I'm going to be working on a, a love based goals book. So really about goals and uh, productivity and that kind of piece of it. So that's kind of what I'm working on as well. So and then if you want to learn how to write copy, um, I mean, I, I I definitely will you know. Uh, you know, would encourage you to read the books. And I am going to be offering some love-based copywriting schools. So if you want to learn how to write copy, either to market your books or to, as to become a copywriter and actually sell your services, you know, uh, you might want to check those out. So those will be, um, I'm probably going to have a couple of those a year. I don't have any specific dates, but if you come, go and sign up to my list, you will find out more. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Michelle. This has been awesome just to hear from you and to learn from all your amazing wisdom. That's great. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Thank you for having me.